Back again for 2023 is the Lincoln Nautilus. Now the one in behind me is the Reserve 201A and it's in the flight blue exterior. On top of that, it has the optional 21 inch wheels, which look pretty dang sharp. Now in Canada, this is just about as loaded as it's gonna get. There's technically one other package, the ultimate package, that this one doesn't have, but we'll touch base on that one in just a second. Steve here, and before we get started, I wanna give Formula Lincoln a huge shout out and thanks for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you guys today on this like, crazy freezing day. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, a few things, as I mentioned about the one in behind me. It's flight blue, and it's also got the Reserve 201A package. So in Canada, that is really as big as it's gonna get. In the States, you do have the option for the black label as well, which is gonna give you a few niceties when you get inside and a few extra niceties being a Lincoln owner. But I like the overall styling and even like the idea of the flight blue, it looks really sharp. Like it's not a color that I see that often. So seeing it here, I kind of like it. There is a nice chrome highlight that follows along the bottom part of the body. And then even as we look at the Nautilus badge, like it's nicely chromed out there. I did mention these are the optional 21 inch wheels you're gonna find inside of the Nautilus. There are a few different style wheels, a few different sizes as well. Like when we look at the base model, we're looking at an 18 inch. Technically the reserve has an 18 inch standard, but you also have the options for 20s or 21s, just depending on the configuration that you've gone with, but it is nice overall. Now, a few things. In Canada, the Nautilus is only gonna be available all-wheel drive, and that's Lincoln's intelligent all-wheel drive. Down in the States, you do have the option for front-wheel drive inside of this vehicle. But Canada, as I mentioned, strictly all-wheel. Not necessarily a bad thing, though. Now, as we shift towards the front end, we do have our forward sensing system available as an option. And one great thing about that system is that it's gonna give us a few other things. So we do also have our forward facing camera. There are side view mounted cameras. We use our backup camera because this bad boy has a full 360 camera, which looks amazing. Now, one thing that's not here, that's kind of like glaring me right in the face, right down at the very bottom, usually where we would find fog lamps. So fog lamps, the only way you're getting them inside of the Nautilus is if we look at getting the ultimate package. And that's gonna give us the 21 inch wheels, fog lamps, and a few other things. But if you don't care about the fogs, not a big deal, you just won't get them. I think I've maybe only used fog lamps once before, like even in the fog, I don't find them overly helpful. But one cool thing about that, the ultimate package, is it's gonna give us headlamps that have adaptive cornering on them. So they're static in a sense, but they're gonna go left and right in order to kind of shine in the road as we go left and right. It's a pretty useful system. But I love the look of the grill here. We've got a nice chromed out look. Beautiful honeycomb, which is great. The bottom, we do have a nice metallic highlight, like a chromed out look along the bottom there, which flows nicely throughout the side of the body, as I mentioned, because it's got that little highlight along the rocker that's chromed out too, which is pretty nice. All right, getting underneath the hood is straightforward. So we've got a little yellow release there Ugh. on hydraulics, which I love. The Nautilus does have two different engine choices that are available. So it's either this one, and that's a two liter turbocharged engine, or you're gonna find the 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. Power wise, this two liter turbo pushes at 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque, versus the 2.7 liter is going to push out 335 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque. So like a crazy difference between the two of them. If you're a bigger fan of that power, the Nautilus 2.7 liter engine is absolutely where you're gonna to wanna to be. Power-wise, that thing is amazing. But if you're mechanically inclined, you're doing some things yourself, we can easily top up fluids, check change your oil. There's also easy access to the battery. You know, if you've been watching any of my videos, you've probably heard me stressing the importance of regularly maintaining your vehicle. And this is no different. It's a turbocharged engine, so you wanna make sure that you're maintaining it properly, just for optimal performance and to make sure that you're maintaining your manufacturer's warranty. So one great thing about being a Lincoln owner, you do have a few great coverages and options that are available. So we've got pretty good base warranty, like six year for our powertrain warranty, which is fantastic, four year for our basic. We've also got Lincoln roadside assistance. So if you ever break down, 
you are covered off for the entire lifetime that you as the original owner own the ride. It's amazing. You can get prepaid maintenance plans at time of ordering from the dealership. And one of the big benefits there is that all your regularly scheduled maintenance is just covered off. So it's that peace of mind, you know things are done. But one great thing is that you do get a little bit of a discount in comparison to if you were to just drop in for your regularly scheduled maintenance. But either way, just make sure you maintain your ride to get the best life out of it. Just for comparison's sake, I'm six feet tall. And I mean, if you take a look, I can see over this thing no problem. So overall height is pretty good. And then getting in and out of the vehicle, I mean, it's not challenging whether we look at the first row or the second row. Super straightforward, which is fantastic. But we've got some pretty cool features that are included here as well, like on our key fob. So one neat thing, oh, power folding side view mirrors. But as long as we've got our fob on us, we've also got a few things. So we've got intelligent access. So we slide our hand in order to be able to unlock the vehicle, which is great. We've also got five digit number pad on the outside. So we can push the bottom too, if we want to lock the door as well. Filling up fuel inside of the Nautilus is also straightforward. So just along our driver's side, we've got our capless system. Now, if you ever need to fill up using a jerry can, there is a little spigot in the back. We definitely need to make sure we insert that first, but once you fill up, you're good to go. I love the capless system. Now, one interesting thing, if we look at horsepower and torque specs under the hood, they're all achieved using a premium fuel. So a 93 octane, but having said that, Minimum manufacturer's recommendation for this vehicle is just your regular 87. And that doesn't matter if you're in the two liter or the 2.7 liter engine. Either one, you can just use regular 87. You don't have to use the premium. Towards the back end of the vehicle, we've got a reverse sensing system, reverse camera, as well as our rear wiper. Those are all standard pieces of technology as well. We've got our dual tip exhaust. Now this one also has the optional tow package you're gonna get from the factory. It doesn't matter if you're in the two liter or the 2.7 liter engine, either way, max towing capacity inside of the Nautilus is 3,500 pounds. Pretty respectable. But if you're looking for that little bit more, the higher towing capacity, you're looking at the Lincoln Aviator or the Ford Explorer as the equivalent. But if you wanna walk through on like the Ford Explorer versus the Lincoln Aviator, or even the Nautilus versus the Edge, check down in the description below. I've put together some comprehensive videos there. But one piece of technology that I really like, we've got as an option inside of the Nautilus. Oh, foot activated lift gate. So I do love that we've got that foot activated lift gate available here as an option. You just have to make sure you have the key fob on you in order for it to work. But it's literally just like swipe and you're opening and closing. If it's snowy out, there's buildup, chances are good that it's not actually going to be able to pick up the sensing. So just go in knowing that if it's too snowy out, you'll probably still have to use the fob, the button to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, or just by the L and Lincoln along the back, there's a little button underneath there. We could also use that instead. But looking at the spacing inside of the vehicle, it is pretty nice, but overall, like lots of stuff in the, well, in the back here, it's kind of crazy. So this one has the optional shade. So it's easy enough to install it in the back here if we want to protect any valuables that might be in the trunk area. We've got all of our thermoplastic rubber trays as well. A few basic things to point off on the right hand side. We've got our subwoofer back there. We've got a little hook as well for our cargo net. There's a 12 volt power point off to the left hand side. And then we also have a few buttons in order to power fold our second row seats. So it's, I guess, technically power release and then it's just manual back up. So we could release it from the back here. You just have to do it yourself in order to pull it back up again. But when we've got that second row folded down, I mean, it just opens things up so, so nicely back here. It's really, really nice. So tons of space back here, which is fantastic. And then if we look, so just in the back area, so we do have the carpeted as a default. I mentioned we've got the thermoplastic rubber tray that are all in the back right now. And then under this, ugh, we've also got our spare tire. Now, the mini spare tire in both Canada and the States is optional now. So you do technically have to get it at time of ordering from the factory. 
I mean, you could technically get one aftermarket if you wanted to. So if you've got the inflator kit, it could be replaced. But I mean, 250 bucks from the factory in Canada in order to get the spare. But we've got our little cargo net back here. I did mention we've got our little white spigot as well. And we've also got a bunch of storage space along the left and the right hand side. Like, I mean, having this shade in the back here, it is like, it's super useful. I know like thefts and things like that have been going up quite a little bit. So being able to easily install this thing and like kind of pull it out in order to block anything that might be in the back, I, I just think it's brilliant. If you don't have that time of ordering your Nautilus from the factory, it is available through your Lincoln dealer as well. Some aftermarket solutions that are available there too. It is kind of cool. It worked. Ha -ha. Taking a peek at the first row of the Nautilus, this is nice. It's luxurious. It's just got this premium feel to it. We've got this nice glossy highlight along the door that follows all the way throughout the dash of the vehicle there as well out to the passenger side. And like the lower part of it is like this nice wood finish. It looks really sharp. Now, there are a few things about the interior here. We've got a few different color choices that are available. And then even that wood green that's on the dash, if you're not a big fan of that, from the factory, you've got a few different options. You could always look at some aftermarket 3M wrap or other options there too. Like they're, it's essentially sky's the limit. But I mean, the design elements inside this are really, really nice. A few small ones about the door. We do have some seat memory buttons and the seats that you get are going to depend on if you're in just like the base models, but we do have the option for 22 way power adjustable seats. And when we do that, we've got a boatload of different options that are along the left side of the driver, right hand side of the passenger. And I mean, like it's crazy. Like we can move the leg cushions independently of one another, easily move the seat forwards, backwards, up and down adjust our backrest like we can even we can get the headrest going like it's crazy forwards backwards on the headrest and then when we get this multi-way adjustable seat like the power 22-way power seat it also has the option for massage capability so nice those massage settings we can adjust right through the middle screen here but We've got massage seat capabilities and then through the sync for media screen, we also have more in-depth settings for the seat. Like we can get it to literally hug us as we go. It is really, really nice. Oh, Lincoln, love it. It's like I said, seat comfortability is there. We've got some basic buttons along our, our door there as well. And that's gonna be to adjust our side view mirrors. We do have power folding side view mirrors there is an option as well which is great our basic window control as well we do have a series of different speakers that are available in this vehicle i mean this thing it sounds amazing and that was like half volume like the audio inside of this thing is incredible so if you're an audiophile, you absolutely want to go with the upgraded audio system. The Revel audio system inside of this is incredible. But like I said, design style and elements are great. We, if we look at just some basics, by our left knee, we do have a series of different buttons that are available. So opening up our trunk, we've got the option of either increasing, decreasing the brightness of this fully digital cluster screen. And like the screen is beautiful with the startup animation as well. It looks really, really sharp. I like it. Stick on the left hand side is obviously for turning. We've got a button on the tip of that stick to turn our lane keeping system on or off. And that works three different ways. So way number one is it's gently going to nudge us back into our lane if we start veering over without signaling. Um, if we start, it, it also could potentially shake the steering wheel. So it's almost like we're running over rumble pavement. And then way number three is it's going to do a mixture of both. Right stick is for our front and for our rear windshield wipers. There's a button on the very tip of the right stick for the wiper in the back. We do have paddle shifters inside of this thing, which is fantastic. You don't have to use them. There's no way to turn it off, but you don't have to use them at the same time. It's more just if you want to improve your performance, you can drop down gears as necessary, which is great. Now, the steering wheel inside of the Nautilus is also going to be power telescoping. And that's just done by our left knee. So we can go in and out, up and down with it. And then one great setting is that we can take our steering wheel setting, we can set our seat the way that we'd like it to. We can adjust our side view mirror 
And then along the door here, we can press and hold either one, two, or three in order to save our own unique profile. So we've got three different settings that are available there. But this is nice. Okay, I love the digital cluster screen. I just think Lincoln, like they've done such a good job on it. It looks really sharp. Uh, if you're looking for more of an in-depth look on the steering wheel cluster, the media screen, check down in the description below. I've put together some comprehensive videos explaining how everything works. But we've got adaptive cruise control settings on our left side. You can find a walkthrough on that video down in the description. We've also got a ton of different buttons in order to navigate through the cluster screen so we can do things like navigate. We navigate, oh, navigation. <laughs> So we can navigate there. We've got a series of different display settings, answer or hang up on a phone call. And then we've got a voice command prompt where we'd be able to change songs, radio stations. We can navigate using our voice. And then one really cool thing is that we can even do things like change the temperature using our voice as well. It's a really great setting. But I mean, the steering wheel itself is fantastic. Nice leather wrapped all the way around with heated steering wheel there that it's available. We can easily turn that on by hitting the menu button in the center stack. And then that just turns, that gives us that option of adjusting there. But I, I like the Sync 4 media screen. Like when, for, uh, when Lincoln, so Lincoln, Ford, both, same, sister from another mister. But when they introduce the Sync 4 screen into the Nautilus, they, I love it. The big benefit is that it's got wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. So if your phone supports it, you do have that available there as an option, which is great. But we do have factory navigation built into this as well as a, a number of great things. So some basic highlights, we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, and a ton of other options there. We can hook up our phone. If we wanna just use regular Bluetooth, we would have that flexibility. But if we hook up through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, depending on the system that you use, you can use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze right through the middle screen. But regardless, we do have factory navigation. And I mean, this thing is super responsive, really nice change. We've got the flexibility of going full screen with the factory navigation as well, which looks pretty sharp. I like it. We've got a favorite button, series of different apps. So as I mentioned, we've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay that are connected wirelessly now, which is great because it was a wired connection in the previous gen system. So I love that it's wireless. A series of different settings that are available. We can create unique profiles for different drivers. So if you wanted to tie it to the key fob, you could do that. It would remember your seat settings. It would remember all of your preferences, like your presets for your audio and things like that. It's really neat. We've got options for driver's seats. We've got our passenger seat for making it hug our seats a little bit, making our hug our body, I should say, a little bit more. If you don't have the multi-way adjustable seats though, those settings just aren't gonna be there. We also do have ambient lighting and it is multi-color ambient light, which is great. So we can easily choose our light source and then our light source, our color. And then from there, it's gonna show in our cup holders and then a few other strategic parts of the vehicle like by our feet, et cetera. It's, it's really neat. We've got a fully digital owner's manual and a number of other great settings there. Uh, one cool thing, this vehicle also does have park assist. So there's a little P button there. So it can either help us with navigation to parking or a generic park assist where it can help us out with parallel parking, perpendicular parking or parallel park out. And if we hit our left turn stick, it's gonna adjust if it's looking on the left or the right hand side. Really, really useful video that I've put together on this thing. You can find it in the description. From there, there is a 360 camera here as an option, which is great. I mean, it pulls up nicely on the screen there. And it's really neat because it utilizes the sensors around the vehicle. So as we're kind of getting closer to an obstacle, it's gonna beep at us and let us know, hey, something's not right. It's kind of neat. We've got a series of different driver assistance settings. And then we've got our beautiful piano key shifter. So park reverse neutral drive. And this one does have a dedicated sport mode button, which I mean, if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know how much I talk about loving sport mode. And one of the big benefits there is it's gonna rev up the RPMs a little bit more just to give you an infinitely sportier performance. But I mean, you don't have to use it. It's just a really nice one to use if you want that little bit more power. And then when you couple that with the paddle shifters, it's a thing of beauty. Now, a few other things. We do have, I did mention outside, a few options for the engine. So whether that's a two liter or 2.7 liter option, but the 2.7, if you're a power aficionado, like you really love your power, you're gonna, want that, you're gonna want that beefier engine, it's amazing. But we've got a series of other things I mentioned. Whew, 
We've got our volume rocker, tuning rocker, series of different climate control settings. We've got dual zone climate control, as well as the option for heated and ventilated first row seats. And the ventilated option is gonna depend in the states on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. So I'm in Canada, and this is the reserve trim level of the vehicle. And I mean, the seat, like it's so comfortable inside of this, but you're gonna have leather seats in every trim level of the vehicle. The big difference is going to be that when you're in certain ones, like when you're in like the, the black label, which is a US exclusive, you're gonna have very different style seats. It's, I've seen it, in, not in person, I've seen it online, it just, it looks fantastic. It's just that little bit of extra, like it's just that little bit different than the reserve model that we've got up in Canada. And like the headspace in the first row is respectable. So like I'm six feet tall and I've got like three and a half, four-ish inches of headspace there, which is fantastic. But this is nice. Now, as we move down the center stack here, so we do have, I mentioned all of our heated seat cool buttons. We've got this little tray as well. And we've got a few power points in there. So there's a USB, USB-C, as well as a wireless charge pad, which is great. And I love it. So it's wireless charge pad and we've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay that are wireless. So we can be wirelessly charged up there as we go. If you want to go to old school, you can just plug in USB if you want to. And I mean, if you want to plug over, like hook up over Bluetooth, you'd have that flexibility. Now, one neat thing, just because of the way that oh, this thing is designed, if we look right underneath, we've got two individual storage trays there as um, on top of that. So if you want some top bottom storage, that is available as an option. I did mention we've got cup holders that feature ambient lighting. And then we've got an armrest that has two tiered storage. So we push the button on the left hand side, so closer to the driver, and that's going to pop up. But we've got a little tray here as well. And that tray is technically something we can lock up. But when we look inside here, we do have a regular 12 volt, well, a 12 volt power point in there as well. So a regular cigarette lighter adapter. Nice amount of storage space there as well. I love all the different highlights. Like that, cool, like that nice glossy highlight that we saw along the door. It's got this nice like chrome look underneath. That follows all the way throughout the center stack. Like all the way through, we've got that nice glossy highlight there as well. It's really sharp. But I like the overall look styling here. The wood grain, I, I like it. I know some people aren't a big fan of it. You're gonna have different tones and things like that depending on the interior. And then that wood grain will swap out again depending on which trim you're in. But you could always upgrade it and change it out, swap it if you want to. There is an auto dimming rear view mirror here. So we can't turn it off unfortunately, but the auto dimming functionality is there. Shooting up overhead, we've got all of our cabin control lights. And then this one has the panoramic sunroof as well, which I mean, it just looks so nice. So we've got a few buttons there. One of them is to control the shade. So single button press should close it half. Yeah, single button press opens and closes it halfway. And then that secondary button press opens it up the full way. We can vent this thing out if we want to, create a nice cross breeze, or we can push away. Let there be light. And it's just gonna open things up beautifully. So nice. I'm just a big fan of sunroofs, so like ha even if you don't have it open, just the fact that it opens things up so nicely, it's, it's beautiful, I love it. There is a sunglasses holder up overhead there as well. If you've got a garage door opener at home, we can easily program it in. We've got our, um, or we've got our home link system there. We've got a visor, vanity mirror as well, hello. Built-in lights, and then we can extend this thing out. It's not going to block all the sun, it's most of it. You might still get, depending on how far you sit towards the steering wheel, you might get a teeny little bit just on the left side there. But I mean, it's nothing too crazy. But outside of that, we've got an assist handle there, driver passenger side in the first row, which is great. But the overall seating comfortability inside of this, it is, it's really nice. And like with the massage, yeah, massage seat capability on top of that, it is really, really comfortable. I like it. But this thing is a two-seater, or two-seater, five-seater. <laughs> this is a five-seat vehicle, but we've got two rows. So let's hop back to that second row and see what's going on space-wise. Well, so second row of the Nautilus is nice. It's nice, it's comfortable. Not as comfortable as the first row seats, and that's just because this one has the upgraded multi-way adjustable seats, so the massage seat fantastic but this is nice 
So if we look at just regular headspace, so like hopped in, first impression headspace, it's tight with the seat all the way upright. So with it all the way upright, my head is like literally touching the very top here. But one great thing, we've got a little lever just by our left side there, and we can actually take that so we can use it if we want to fold the seat down, but we can also extend it back if we want to. And I mean, that creates a good amount of headspace there. So I went from no headspace to about two and a half roughly inches of headspace there max. I don't think I can get much more out of that. Yeah, I'm about two and a half inches of headspace at the very most inside of the second row of the Nautilus here. I mean, as I mentioned, I'm six feet tall. So like six two, six three, probably comfortably able to sit inside of this thing. But the seat comfortability is great. And one thing that I love about the Nautilus is how wide the vehicle is. Like having three full-size versions of me inside of this car, it's not gonna be an issue whatsoever. It's so like the big thing is always in this middle seat. Like it'll be a little bit tight if you've got three full-size versions of me. But I mean, if you had a younger family, smaller friends, whatever the case may be, you're not gonna have an issue getting three people back here at all, which is great. If you have your fur baby, etc. So this is nice though, but some nice highlights. Like we saw all of those great glossy highlights along the door that follow back through to the second row here. Got that same nice leather, follow those all the way throughout the door, the seats. It's nice. Highlights along the door here. So we've got our basic cup holders there. We do have pockets behind the driver as well as the passenger side. And then if we move down, we've got a few buttons there. So we've got heated outboard seats, and that's an option for the driver passenger side. Middle seat inside of the Nautilus is never gonna be heated. We've also got a little hideaway, like the little tray thing, I guess, where we've got a regular wall outlet and two USB-C ports. So power points all over the place inside of this because we've got two in the front there, two USB ports, and then two USB in the back. But overall, this is nice. And we do have two cup holders here, which is great. So just built right into the seat. And then I did mention, we've got our bottle holders along the door. So along the driver passenger door. Now, if you've got kids, front facing, rear facing seats, not gonna have an issue. We had to have all of our anchor and tether points in the vehicle on top of that. But the seat is like it is, it's, it's fairly comfortable, but I mean, headspace I did mention with the seat reclined, I've got space, which is great. I've got a good amount of knee space though as well, which is fantastic. So knee space is great. Width and the shoulders is, is good. This is a comfortable ride. I like it. Now, a few things. We don't have the option for tri-zone climate control inside the Nautilus, so it's strictly dual zone for the first row. So whatever the driver's seat set to, that's what we're gonna have blowing through the vent in the back here. But I mean, here nor there, it would be cool to see second row ventilated seats. <laughs> don't think that's gonna come as an option though, but it would be really cool to see that back here. Up overhead, we've got another assist handle. There's a little hook as well as a little light, just kind of nice. But outside of that, we don't have many other features in the second row. It's nice, it's simple, it's clean. I like that we've got the speakers along the door on top of that. So it's just that idea of the, the added immersive audio experience. It sounds amazing. It's nice though. But like these, these rides, like they're, they're so quiet. Like that's one thing that I like about Lincoln is that, I mean, you look at the Ford equivalent, which would be the Ford Edge, and don't get me wrong, like the Ford Edge is a great vehicle. It does technically feature the same two liter or the 2.7 liter engine. So if you actually want to walk through a comparison comparing the two of these things, you'll find that in the description. But one thing I like about Lincoln is that these rides are so quiet. They've got active noise cancellation, which is the reason why. But I mean, it is really, really nice. Oh, I love it. So good. Cool. Lincoln, you done good. Matthew McConaughey would be proud. All right, all right, all right. We're going over a boatload of bumps right now and like, I'm throwing some stuff out and this thing is like, eh, whatever. It's a good, it's a nice ride. Suspension is great. More bumps. Purposely trying to go over like everything if I can, but 
I mean, this is fantastic. And that was a look at the 2023 Lincoln Nautilus. I love the flight blue, all the different features and options that are available inside of this. What'd you think? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. But one thing I'm going to say, I am very curious what's happening with the future of the Nautilus. And the reason why is because the plant that these things are assembled at, so the Nautilus of the Edge, is going through an electrification process. So, as of right now, the Edge and Nautilus production is still ramping into 2024. But, future of the Nautilus, I'm not sure of as of yet. But here's the thing. The Nautilus on paper technically was supposed to get an EV upgrade very soon. Ford and Lincoln have also said that all their vehicles are going electric by 2035. So it would be really cool to see this thing as a fully electric vehicle. I know that we should be getting our first Lincoln Electric very soon as well. So I'm very curious to see what the future of the Nautilus has in store. If you have any questions, drop down in the comments section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. And I definitely recommend if you're looking at putting in an order for a Nautilus, a Corsair, Navigator, whatever the case may be, reach out to either Formula Lincoln or Yorkville Lincoln. They've got your backs. But if you have any questions, share them down in the comment section below. If you think anybody else might find this video useful, make sure you share it with them. And until I see you next time, take care. 100%. Towards the back end of the vehicle, we've got our reverse. Ooh. <laughs> but one piece of technology that I really like, we've got as an option inside of the Nautilus. Of course it doesn't work for us to type. <laughs>